Hello there and welcome to training. Tim Warner here from techtrainertim.com, providing you with a review of the GitHub Copilot certification. Brand new as of this recording in the very end of 2024, early 2025. Now I have to make a fundamental assumption that you're familiar with generative AI, GitHub, and GitHub Copilot. Assuming that, you might be interested in earning this cert if you want first-party validation from GitHub that you have GitHub Copilot skills. The exam is priced at $99 USD or your currency equivalent. That's strategically low compared to other competitors in this space like Microsoft and Cisco and Apple. The cert's valid for three years, although I haven't found renewal instructions yet. We're still early days. In fact, I just earned this certification as of this recording a couple days ago. Now, I will post a public gist, timw.info slash copilot review, that contains learning resources that are supplemental to this video. Let's continue. The exam essentials. The GitHub Copilot certification is a basic multiple choice test, 65 to 75 questions over approximately two hours. There's a pass mark, but it's completely irrelevant. It's a pass fail exam. So I would say get over the finish line. That's what you want. These exams are really lean and mean. They show their age in terms of their newness. There's no big case studies or performance-based tests. It's just your ordinary garden variety, single answer and multiple choice questions. PSI handles the proctoring. Live online is what I use, and they're pretty good. I've used them for several certifications. They're quite easy to work with. Again, consult the gist for further links. The biggest pitfall I found when trying to book the GitHub Copilot exam is that you need to go through a specific gate. You need to go through the GitHub certification page, specifically examregistration.github.com slash overview. Choose your exam and then and only then kick over via SSO, single sign-on, to create your PSI account using your GitHub credential. And that GitHub credential cannot be an enterprise managed user. It has to be a personal identity. But you can, of course, link that personal ID to GitHub Enterprise Cloud. Now, remember that we're covered by the Canada Agreement, so we don't talk about exam content specifically. But in general, you want to be anchored on the GitHub Copilot Certification Study Guide, which is a PDF. And I link to it directly here, timw.info slash copilot study guide. And that is a really great document that consists of pillars or key areas like governance, licensing, and using Copilot, including a lot of prompt engineering. But pay attention, governance, licensing, and unfortunately, some user interface trivia is on the menu. And I don't want you to be blindsided on that. I think that's an artifact of GitHub being really early and green in certification. In my opinion, speaking with almost 30 years of experience in IT certification across many vendors, GitHub is very, very early in their, in their program here. Again, that's just my opinion. Feel free to take it or leave it as you wish. Lastly, practice makes perfect. In as much as you should practice with GitHub Copilot, not only in Visual Studio Code, but also in Visual Studio. VS Code is free and cross-platform. Visual Studio has the Community Edition. Get Visual Studio 2022 Community or whatever the latest version is. The reason for that is intentional. The exam seems to skew very heavily towards those IDEs. So if you're using JetBrains or if you're using NeoVim or Data Studio, make sure that at least while you're prepping for the exam that you're really sharp on the interface in GitHub Web, GitHub Mobile, and as well as VS Code and Visual Studio. It's just what we have to do. Some other test taking tips specifically, anticipate the format. Hopefully you've taken computer-based exams before. I like to take my laptop into one of my bathrooms at home. I do, because I'm not gonna be interrupted. There's no distractions. Prepare your space means that you've got a quiet private location. I normally advise my students to not set up your desktop battle station as a cert station because it's not going to work. If you've got multiple monitors and headsets, you're going to run into problems. So you want a laptop, not a mobile or tablet, but a full laptop that's got a webcam and microphone and cameras in a quiet location. And lastly, make sure that your face is always visible as soon as you start the check-in process and avoid touching your face. That's to preserve exam security. 
Now, I gave you some of my unfiltered feedback so far, just teasing it. Let me formally give you what I see as the GitHub Copilot certification strengths, and then we'll do suggestions for improvement. First of all, I believe that the foundation is sound here. If you read the PDF study guide, it's really nice. It takes you into responsible AI, definitely a lot of prompting, which is essential. Now, what you might be surprised on is how much governance is there. So you really need to know your governance and not only how to govern GitHub Copilot, but specifically the UI path, unfortunately. In other words, click this, this, this. Hopefully we'll see less of that nonsense as we go on. And I also believe not only in the GitHub Copilot cert, but all of them. I'm really centering a lot of my career on GitHub Enterprise Cloud now because I'm such a huge fan and see what enormous value it brings businesses around the world. Now, for suggestions for improvement, the biggest one I would have for GitHub is take advantage of the experts who have been there and done that before you. If you collaborated with Microsoft, it's not too late. They can help you solve and sort all of this freshman learning curve stuff that I see going on in your cert program now. And then when you're taking the exam, to see items that are obviously skewed toward a specific IDE directly leaves out customers and users, developers who are on other IDEs. And lastly, I would say reducing the language nuances. We don't want to say which of these is best or this is better than that because we want to have parallel questions, A, B, C, D. If they're all starting with a verb, an imperative verb, we do that. We click here, we navigate there, and then if C says something totally different. In other words, these are all really freshman and sophomore errors that reduce the effectiveness of the exam, it's gonna cause some people to not pass, in my opinion. That language really needs an overhaul. So back to you as the learner. I would suggest, this is some gold for you. If you're not time pressed for passing GitHub Copilot, I would ask you to consider the GitHub Foundation Cert as a precursor because it is excellent. It's filled with solid guidance on just ground level familiarity with GitHub, and that'll tee you up for the GitHub Copilot exam nicely. As far as once you've earned your Copilot certification, where you might want to go next in the GitHub certification portfolio is GitHub Actions. This would give you, regardless of your job role, a lot of practice time with GitHub and GitHub Actions and workflows because you can do any kind of automation, whether it's DevSecOps or straight up development or completely ops or something not even totally IT. We can use GitHub Actions workflows to do that and Copilot to help from there. All right, that's it. I want to keep these videos lean and mean. All materials, including my contact info, is at the short link timw.info slash copilot review. That's a public gist that I welcome you to fork, clone, and comment on. All the best to you. I hope that you found this useful, and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take good care.